Right, in this video here, I've got my new Proxon BSG220 drill sharpening machine. Well, it's not new, I got it on eBay uh, for a very good price. And it came with everything that um, it would have as new. I've made this board up here to hold it. It has um, four holes for securing it to a board. So this is a piece of plywood and I've put a box on the back here for the allen keys and the spare wheel so that's screwed onto the um, table there I've also put some rare earth magnets for the spanner and the drill adapter there or the drill holder and today I'm going to show you how um, I actually use it it took me a while to get used to it and that's basically because the instructions I thought were badly written. It's got some very good diagrams. I downloaded the um, instructions from the internet and I've laminated them. So you get the um, diagrams like that. But I found that the, like I say, the instructions are very difficult to actually understand. So I set about using it and testing it out until I found out exactly how to use it. And I have actually seen online some bad reviews of this um, drill sharpening machine. And I believe that those reviews are done by people or written by people that have been unable to use it properly because of the overcomplicated instructions. Plus there are one or two things on this actual machine that need upgrading. Um, one being the um, stone um, sharpener or um, dresser, should I say. Um, this is very poor and I wouldn't use it. It makes the wheel uneven and that transfers onto the cut on the um, drill. I use one of these diamond um, tools here put onto the wheel and that will make it dead flat really easily um, this one here doesn't actually cover the whole wheel you're meant to use it and uh, go up and down with it but like I say it's very um, uneven the wheel is after it's used so that's no good and the only other thing I found wrong with it really is this dial here with the numbers on is very small so um, you have to have it in really good light to be able to read the um, dial which has to be spot on so that's the only three things that I don't like about this machine the dresser the dial at the back here and also the poorly written instructions you can use the dresser unit here to hold one of these um, tools that you buy separately or one of these dressers put a cable tie on there or a zip tie so you can hang it on there so it's all ready at hand and if I get round to it sometime I may actually change that dial for an aluminium one with um, larger stamped um, numbers and divisions rather than these small raised numbers and one other thing I'd just like to show you before I um, show you how to use it I've made this part here which screws on the underside here with a couple of um, butterfly nuts and this is so that I can use it in a bench vise in my small shed so now I'll show you how I use the machine. The first thing you pick up is this one here, which is the drill clamp guide. You get the blunt drill and put it in this one and measure from the back face here to the back of the drill and make sure that is 10 millimeter. It can be a little bit over, but not under 10 millimeter. And that's quite critical you can lightly tighten this one 
and then put it into the part here on the um, machine and you use this edge here to line up the cutting edges of the tool. I don't actually use this one. I find it's much easier for me to get the 10 millimeter correct, holding it like this so it's all clamped together. And all as I do is line it up so the, the cutting edges are vertical to the um, shafts here, the guide shafts, top and bottom. And then tighten it up with the spanner, like that. So that's what it looks like in the clamp. The cutting edge is vertical to these bar parts here. And so that I don't have to use a rule each time, I put a mark on the side of the table here for 10 millimeter. And the 10 millimeter makes it so that when you put it into the um, machine, that it sits in the V with this one in the guide here but the back of the drill rests against this face here. So I hold it in there like that and tighten that one up. You can have it slightly over 10 millimeter, like I say, but if you have it under 10 millimeter, the shaft here will clash with the knob on the top here. So to just go through that again, close up, 10 millimeter from the back of the drill to the back face of the drill clamp guide. That one goes into the slot here and the drill or the back of the drill is pushed up tightly against this shoulder here and then lightly tighten that knob here. And you'll find that opposite to um, what the instructions say. They say to put the drill into this um, guide part here first so that it's just touching the wheel and then release this so that it clamps the drill and then reverse the um, screw here a bit by about one millimeter which is one turn of the um, dial here and then go from there. But like I say, I find it much easier to locate this on the back face of this um, part here first, and then press the plunger here and move the assembly forward until it just clears the wheel by about a millimetre. So the drill is about a millimetre from the diameter of the wheel and then unscrew this one here and it will clamp the drill in the um, guide here. And you leave this one clamped up all the time you're sharpening, you don't have to um, release that at all. It's just under spring pressure to keep it um, located in the V like that, but you can move it forward obviously with the um, screw at the back here for sharpening. Like I say, you don't have to um, undo this one again until it's time to turn the drill over. And for those that haven't seen this Proxon drill sharpener before, I'd just like to show you the clever mechanism on it. When you are sharpening, you're doing this motion here, side to side, and the uh, guide here rotates the drill as you're going round and puts the 
perfect um, clearance on it as well as the uh, grind angle and it does it to DIN specifications so I'll just show you that again from a different angle so you can see that rotation it's a very clever design so I've got a new wheel on here so it's ready to start up, so I don't need to dress that wheel. And what I'm going to do is move the screw forward here until the drill just touches the wheel and then obviously do the motion of the um, grinding like that and I'm going to remember exactly where this one ends up when I've finished the first side And when you get skilled at using it, you can actually view it from the side here to see that the first edge is finished. So it's fully ground that first cutting edge. And then I wind the screw one whole turn back. Release the clamp here. Press the plunger and pull the assembly back. And then I can uh, loosen this one here and take the drill out. Don't take this clamp off, leave it in exactly the same position and just check that the first side has cleaned up like it has. So now I turn it over, put it back into the assembly, make sure that the back edge of the drill, the back face of the drill is hard up against the back part here again, so it's in exactly the same position, and press the plunger on the side here and again bring it up sight down the side and see that you're about one millimeter from the edge of the wheel or the diameter of the wheel then let the clamp down again so it's held in position and it's ready to do the next side and I'll be going in to exactly the same position which is one whole turn to the number one again
So I went into exactly the same position on this one and released the clamp, pulled back the assembly, loosen the knob here and take the drill out and you can see there that I've got a perfect grind and it's that easy to use this machine. And I've used these sharpened drills on my lathe afterwards and I get a perfect spiral from each side proving that the grinding is dead equal and if you want to you can thin the web there on the edge of a grinding wheel and I'll show you how to do that in another video. I'll also hopefully show you any upgrades that I do to this one whether I change this dial or not I don't know whether it's worth it or not as long as you've got good light you can actually see this one so it's not that bad and I'm really pleased with this machine I think it's a really clever design and like I say the only people that give it a bad review are the ones that don't know how to use it and just before I finish I'd just like to show you the where you get this one off here I never realized this is just a cap here I was trying to unscrew it when um, I first got it but all you do is use a allen key or whatever to flip that one off and then the other allen key to actually change the wheel and that's about it